What is going on guys, The Real KJ3 here, and the other day I was scrolling through eBay looking for a Windows XP laptop to restore, and I found one for a whole $50 that quite honestly didn't need much other than a new OS installation. The funny thing is about this laptop is my old middle school had the same exact ones when they first came out on the market, so this little 10 inch laptop was a blast from my younger past. So now that I own one, I could actually do things on this laptop that I couldn't in school, like download games and play them instead of strictly using them for PowerPoint and Office Word. So I'm going to go ahead and cut open the box here and get it all unpackaged and show you guys the glory that is this little laptop. Shout out to the eBay seller, man. This is packaged nicely. Like, there is no way this could have got damaged in shipping. Taking it out of the box, it is heavily padded, so this might take me a second to open up, so I'm going to speed through this part. Okay, so there was like layers upon layers upon layers of bubble mailers, so I'm just going to cut right to where I'm pulling the laptop out. Okay, taking it out of the many layers of bubble mailers, we finally have the Lenovo S10e laptop. I swear after unpackaging that, I'm so over bubble mailers right now. Let's get that out of the way. Overall, from the outside, this is like 90% clean aside from the crack on the corner. But other than that, man, this looks real clean for a laptop of its age. The bottom isn't really scuffed up either, and it still has all the feet, and it even has somewhat remnants of its old COA from Microsoft. So that's pretty cool. So looking at the ports on the side, we have the charging port, VGA, SD card, and USB 2.0. On the front we have the LED indicators. And on the other side we have a additional expansion card slot, our headphone in, microphone in, USB 2.0, and Ethernet. Opening up the laptop and trying to power it on presents absolutely nothing, probably because the battery's been long dead. Unfortunately, this laptop didn't come with a charger, probably because of its age and it's probably long gone. However, the good thing is, I do have a spare Lenovo charger laptop from a different Lenovo that I have, so hopefully it'll work. I did look up the voltage and wattage and everything seems to check out, but you know, the port might not fit, so I guess we'll have to see. Alright, bombs away. Well, no smoke and no explosion, so I think we're good. Now let's go ahead and try and power it on and see what we get. So it has Cloud Ready installed as the operating system. I've never used it and I don't plan to. But either way, this is going to get overwritten by Windows XP so I could actually use it for its full intention. But it's pretty cool to see that older laptops can get new life with this OS anyway. I also noticed that my Wi-Fi light is blinking, so maybe this already has Wi-Fi drivers installed? I don't seem to be getting too far too fast. I see that my pointer's working, but not much else. Oh, there we go. Alright, so yeah, it actually is detecting all the uh, Wi-Fi networks, uh, at least around me, so that's that's pretty cool. See, it is detecting my Wi-Fi 6 network, so that's pretty good. Pretty happy about that, so hopefully Windows XP should be able to do the same. I do have to point out, for a laptop of this age, like, the buttons are absolutely solid. Like, brand new, there's no give, no free play in the buttons, the trackpad feels good, the keyboard feels good. Man, like, I am happy. Like, I think I got lucky with this one. But aside from that, let's go ahead and shut it down and get some installation media for Windows XP. It's good to see that I have the charging light on the laptop, that's probably going to be the only time when it works is when it's being charged. So using Rufus and a copy of Windows XP, I made a bootable USB flash drive to install Windows XP from, so let's go ahead and plug it into the side and get installing.
Alright, the installation is complete, so let's go ahead and give it its first boot with Windows XP Home Edition. So I can tell right from the get-go that the graphics drivers aren't installed, and if the graphics drivers aren't installed, I can probably assume that the audio isn't either. And judging that there's absolutely no sound coming from the speakers, and I don't hear the startup sound, there's no sound drivers. Trying to change the display settings through the dialog box doesn't do anything, it doesn't even flicker the screen. So yeah, there is absolutely nothing on here. Let's see the properties and see if they can change it. Anything at all. At least it's on the highest color quality, but yeah, there's absolutely no changing the screen resolution. But luckily, on that flash drive I already preloaded it with drivers to install, I just have to actually install them manually, so I'm going to go ahead and speed through that. Okay, the last driver is installed, so I'm going to see if I can change the resolution of the screen now. Everything went well as far as the installation went. So it is detecting the proper drivers, and I have multiple options. So it should- ooh, that's not right. Where did my- Okay, apparently pressing no didn't change it back. And I no longer have the option to change the screen resolution now. That's definitely strange. Okay, so it's doing that thing where it scrolls the screen on its own. Okay, so let's try and change it again. Yeah, I'm getting absolutely nothing. Okay, I'm gonna go through the Intel program and see if I can change the uh, color settings and the display settings. Okay, yeah, I can see right there it's set to the wrong resolution. So I'm going to hit apply. There we go. That looks a lot more like it. I'm going to hit OK on that. Hit OK. So let me see if it gave the options back to change the settings through Windows. I uh, noticed that it's set to 16-bit color, which I can't change through there. So I'm probably going to have to change that through the Intel program. So I'm going to do that real fast. No. Here we go, 32-bit. Alright, apply. There we go, everything looks a lot better now. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. I'm gonna go ahead and give the computer a restart to see if the sound drivers will work afterwards.
All right, so as you can hear, the sound drivers are correctly working. Got a little bit of screen flicker going on because of the graphics drivers are settling in, but it shouldn't do that anymore. I'll go ahead and close out of that. I'm gonna go into my graphics properties here to make sure everything is set the way I want it to. All right, cool, everything's looking good. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that. I'm going to go into my music here, and as per every audio driver installation video that I do, I gotta play me some Highway Blues. I'm sorry, you can't change my mind, but Highway Blues is way better than the Beethoven Symphony. Alright, that's enough of that. Oh cool, we also see that our webcam drivers were successfully installed, so let's go ahead and test that out real fast. Hello. And goodbye. That's enough of that. I'm going to go back into my computer here, and I want to see the exact hard drive size, because I'm pretty sure it's either like a 35 or a 40 gigabyte drive. Okay, so we got a 40 gig in here. Okay, that's what I thought. Standard for XP laptops of this era. I'm going to take a look at the system properties here and see what it lists. So it looks like we have a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom CPU, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. I did look up the specs a little earlier, didn't really go into too much detail, but I know that 1.5 gigs is the max for this laptop, so it's cool to see that it's maxed out as far as the RAM goes. So exiting out of that. So with this being a $50 Windows XP era laptop, I think I got away with a pretty good one as far as the function and cleanliness goes. I do plan to do more videos with this as far as gaming and stress tests, but that will do it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos of computer and tech restorations. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.